last night in my dream, I was stationed forever on a far little rock in the midst of the sea. My one chance for life was a ceaseless endeavor to sweep off the waves as they swept over me. Alas, it was no dream, for ahead I behold it. I see I am helpless, my fate to avert. She laid down her broom and her apron she folded. She laid down and died and was buried in dirt. Oh, life is a toil and love is a trouble. Beauty will fade and riches will flee. Pleasures they dwindle and prices they double. Nothing is as I would wish it to be. Thank you. So people had to do all of these things for themselves. And of course, one thing they needed to do, which we still do a lot of in Western Pennsylvania, is hunting. They had wonderful wildlife here, boar and elk and deer and all kinds of fowl. And one other thing that I think was hunted a good deal was groundhog. Anybody here ever have any groundhog? Now, come on. <laughs> Yes, you have. Yes. Good. My mother said that my grandmother used to stuff it and bake it like a turkey. I don't know. Another woman <laughs> at, a, at one of these um, PHC gigs told me that uh, in her family they always ate it with ketchup and sauerkraut. Honestly, if you've got a family to feed and you've got these big fat whistle pigs roaming around out there, they call them whistle pigs because if you whistle they'll stand up, which makes them a little easier to catch. When they get when you out, yell at them, they don't stand up. <laughs> Try whistling at them next time. <laughs> well, anyhow, it was a source of protein and, and a way to feed your family. And on a good day, you might go out and hunt up some groundhog. You might get four or five or six groundhog. Of course, you didn't have a refrigerator, you know. So you cook up all this groundhog. I understand you got to cook it a pretty long time, so it's not tough. And then you'd have all this groundhog, and you'd think. I could invite my neighbors over for dinner. But of course, you couldn't call them on your cell phone. So maybe after your food was ready, you might yell over to the other holler, something like, Groundhog! And then you'd listen to see if anybody was going to join you for dinner. And if they were going to come, they'd yell as loud as they could back at you, Groundhog! And then you'd know you had company. So in this song, I'm going to invite you to dinner a few times, and I'd like you to yell back from the other holler. Remember, this is quite a way, so you have to yell back and let me know that you're coming to dinner, okay? <laughs> you don't think they would come? No, they... <laughs> well, imagine you're real hungry, and the groundhog sounds pretty good. So I'm going to invite you to dinner, and then you've got to holler back, okay? Groundhog. Pretty good. You don't sound real hungry, but that's okay. That's okay. You'll warm up to it. I'm going to invite you a few times. Um, the second verse of this song sounds a little funny, so I'll tell you what it says. It's the meat will do to eat and the hide will do to wear. But if I slow that down, it's the meat will do to eat and the hide will do to wear. Because, of course, you're not going to waste any part of your groundhog. You would make clothing or shoes or something out of the hides and skins. But when I sing it fast, it's a meat will do to eat and a hide will do to wear. <laughs> Call up your hounds and whistle up your dogs. Call up your hounds and whistle up your dogs. We're off to the woods to get a groundhog. Groundhog! I like my groundhog stewed and fried with a little piece of bacon on the side. Yummy! Groundhog! Very nice. <laughs> Well, once
once again, when people wanted to make music and they were settled in the hills and hollows of Pennsylvania, they couldn't just run down to the music store to get an instrument. They had to make music out of whatever they had available. And often what they had available were all of the tools that they used for hard work during the day. Maybe in the daytime, you'd be in your kitchen mixing up some batter. But in the evening, when your friends and family would come and gather on your back porch and you wanted to make some music, you could take your wooden spoons out of the kitchen and turn them into a percussion instrument like this. And that would add a little bit of percussion to the band. One of my favorite instruments is the bones. And the reason I really like the bones is because it just shows you that people will make music out of anything. You know, even their leftovers. The bones were made out of a cow bone or a, an animal bone, their leg. Somebody figured out that if you sand them down in a certain way and hold them in a certain way, they make a nice percussive instrument like this. You can add a little bit of percussion using, using your leftovers from dinner. If you had a little more time and a few things lying around the house, you could make yourself an uni can or a canjo. Do you have one of these, Scotty? So. No, I'm going to have to make one and donate it to Debens. Um, it's a very simple instrument. It's made obviously with a tin can and a stick and a string. And then, what's on the bottom there? A penny. A penny, right. And you can't make an uni can without a penny. It's really an important part of the structure. Any engineers, anybody know why you would need a penny? Anybody that plays a stringed instrument? The copper sound. It has something to do with the metal. That's right. Anything? It sound. Well, in a way it does. If, if, you play, if anybody plays a stringed instrument, you know that the string has to be held up off of the fretboard. If it's flat, it won't make any, any music. Well, the steel string would cut right through the aluminum can. So you take a penny and you put a hole in it with a hammer and a nail, which I don't think is legal, but, um, and then you put your string through there and it, it, hold, it acts as a bridge to hold, to hold your string up so that you can make this beautiful sound. Beautiful, beautiful. Wouldn't want to miss that. Over, oh. Now, does everybody know what these are? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A washboard, you know, you would take your clean clothes or your dirty clothes, you'd scrub them on here with some lye soap. Lye soap, which I still don't understand how you can make something that cleans soap out of, cleans clothes out of grease and ashes. and But, but it works, you know, so you would scrub your clothes. Um, but again, in the evening, you could take this tool that you worked with during the day and one of these, which is a thimble, a thimble. very good. Um, when I do these in schools, uh, kids are pretty familiar with a washboard. This one they're not so familiar with, though. Um, some kids say it's the Monopoly piece, <laughs> which it is. One little boy told me it was a bucket. Um, kind of looks like a Hershey kiss. But there's another reason somebody told me it was a kiss. A little girl told me it was a kiss. Anybody know why? From Peter Pan, when Wendy um, gives him a thimble and tells him it's a pick, or a, a, a kiss. So lots of different ways you can use these, but of course, mainly they were to protect your fingers while you were sewing. But in the evening, you take these two tools, put them together and make a percussive sound like this. So that makes a nice loud percussive sound. So we have, you know, some percussion, we have some stringed instruments, and of course, no band would be complete without a bass. So you have this old wash tub, you know, back in the day, if it got a little rusty or it had a hole in it, you wouldn't just throw it away. 
you would flip it over and make something useful out of it, like a wash tub base, also called a gut bucket. And it was called a bu gut bucket because the string was often made from the gut of an animal. But I'm not going there. This is an old bass string. It's held on with a button. This is an old mop handle. Just cut a little notch out of the end of it and put it down here. And then, you know, it's really just the tension on the string that creates the sound. So we've got a little bass for our band now. So now all I need are some musicians to come up and help me play these instruments. Come on up here, young man. You're the first one, so you get to pick what instrument you want. The spoons, the uni can, wash. You're going for the bass. You're going for the bass. Oh, come on over here. We'll set you up. Do you play bass? Uh, you might you might now though you might from now on so you need to put one foot up here and you kind of pull that back okay and then now you got to pull it back even tighter got that perfect that's exactly what you need to do now he just needs the rest of the band so come on up you're gonna volunteer okay come on up very good <laughs> Good idea, bring Jim. <laughs> Would you like a washboard? Sure. Feeling like a washboard? Okay. So this you just hold in the kind of crook of your arm. Yeah, you can okay. just, and that goes on the end there. All right, we're getting there. A couple more volunteers. Who would like to come up? Do you want to come on up and I'll give you an instrument? Did I hear you say you're going to play the, no? <laughs> There you go. That kind of goes there and that way. You couldn't talk her into it, huh? Got a few. Come on up. I could see that willingness. All right. So I think I'll give you the uni can. Okay. Hold it like this. Yeah. Any way you can get it to make noise is how you do it. Perfect. Very nice. You know, there's no wrong way to play these instruments, which is the good thing about them. Now I am going to ask my my washboarders to do a mel uh, rhythm like this, which could be we will we will rock you. <laughs> that's, that's not what we're going to play though. <laughs> But we are going to play a song that was written in 1847 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It had its first public performance at the Eagle Ice Cream Saloon. It became an immediate hit. People just loved this song. In fact, the 49ers who were heading out to um, find gold in California sang it all the way across the country. So in some ways, this was the very first number one hit in the country. Now, does anybody know who that teenager might have been or what song we might be playing? 1847, I bet you know. Not ringing any bells. Oh, the banjo is a hint. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, you got it. And, and our teenager who wrote the song was Stephen Foster. So hopefully you all remember this song and we can sing it together, but we're going to get our washboarders doing that rhythm. Then on the end of every line, there's kind of a bonk, bonk, which is what I need from my string people up here, okay? So just a good bonk, bonk. Pull it back and give it a bonk, bonk, okay? All right, it's gonna be a beautiful thing. Ready?